Hi, so this is a little supplement to the video we were making before. We're using PhotoP to use vectors to recreate this Trek logo with a circle, a crest, and the star that goes into it. So here's how we can start adding some more enhancements and using the vector tools and the PhotoP tools to their fullest. Number one, let's try adding to this a layer style. Layer, layer style, and a drop shadow. That's going to make things look a little slicker. We can control that anytime we want by double clicking the effect in the layer and going into the settings for drop shadow. Sometimes you have to make sure you click on it first and we'll move it off to the side. You can, you can change the distance. You can change the size of it. So many things that can, can just kind of make the thing pop a little bit more. What I really quite like about this too is you can take those effects once they're in the layer. You can right mouse click this. Oops, I'll try to do it so you can see it. And uh, under layer style, you can copy those settings, go to another layer, right mouse click, layer style, and paste the settings. So I've just put it on the same effect in two different layers. And I'm going to click on background to get rid of that path that's showing up. So you get that idea. Cool stuff. Next thing I'm going to mess with is in terms of the effects of this, the circle fill for that particular vector is maybe a little less effective than it can be. So I'm going to go back to the tool that made it. I'm going to click on shape tool. It doesn't have to be the circle, but now I get access to the options for that particular object and I'm going to change the fill and try changing it to something a little more dramatic. Now here's the thing of it. I'd like to get that same color. It looks like that color of blue is right there for me, but I'm going to change to the gradient version and then I'm going to change this to be a radial gradient and then I'd sure like to change that radial gradient color so it matches the blue. So I'm going to click it here and move the dialog so I can actually see it. And I'm going to find these controls here. These are the, I call them crayons, but they basically define what the gradient color starting point and ending point are going to be. In this case, in the middle, you'll notice in radial, the left side is what's in the middle and the right is on the outside. I would like to make the middle sort of a, a light version of that blue. And I don't have exactly that blue, so I'm just going to guess at it for now. But there's ways that you can actually pick it out of there a little bit more cleanly. I'll just say OK for now. And I'll do the same thing with this. Double click this. I'd like to pick the same color blue. Now it's left the hue up there. That's handy. So I know any color that I choose here is going to match. And I'm just going to choose a deeper color of that there, of the same hue. And actually, maybe I'll double click this. Maybe I'll just take it to a lighter version of the same hue. So it almost gets to being white. Remember to find your OK buttons and find your way out of there or things don't work out so well. So I've managed to make that gradient into the fill there. Kind of like it. I'm going to look at it a little more carefully though, because I think I can make some more enhancements that'll make it stand out a bit better. For one thing, I can change the scale of it, or I could change the offset to it so it sort of lightens one side. And to make this thing look a little more 3D, I'm going to put the offset over to this side like this. Or maybe I'll take the scale down and move the offset, offset so it looks a little bit more like a reflection, X and Y, just like that. And maybe scale it back up a little bit. So you can make this whole thing look just a little bit cooler by playing around with the fill. And you can also play with patterns as well. But in this case, I think I've got the thing done, so I'm good. I'm going to leave it there. I'll go play with the, the crest next. Same thing with the crest. I'm going to use a, a gradient with that, I think. So I've selected it. I still have the shape tool chosen down here, so I can just go to fill, choose a gradient. And when I choose this, it's just going to default to the last gradient that I used and apply it to that. So I've got to go up there and start tweaking this gradient again. Now, if you get some swatches in there, you can store them. As far as storing swatches, oh yeah, you can define new thumbnails. I'm going to have to investigate that another time. There's ways of storing your swatches in there so that you can use the same gradient in different places or have a little stable of gradients. But in this case, I'm going to choose something that's pretty simple. And I'm going to try to use sort of a different type of gradient with this. So clicking, gradient. I don't want to use radial. I'm going to use something called reflected. Reflected is kind of interesting. Or, you know what, better than that, I'm going to go linear. No. Yeah, linear. Make a linear gradient. I'll click on it now. And the linear gradient, I just want to be gray. So I'm just going to slide on over here and I'm going to choose, let's see, the outside edge, I want to have sort of a darker gray. Like that. Say OK. And over here, I'd like it to be a darker gray too. I'll double click it and I'll just choose something randomly over there and say OK. But I'd like it to get sort of a sheen in the middle. So I'm just going to click in the middle, double click, 
and I'm just going to lighten this thing way up right in the middle and say OK. So now I've got a gradient that goes from gray to light to gray and I can pull these things around a little bit just to manipulate how this reflection is going to work. So it looks like a little bit more of a reflection. A slow gradient there and a much tighter gradient here. And I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to play with it. So I can scale it up or scale it down to try to make this thing look like this. I can change its rotation like that. I can offset it just a little bit. So you can come up with something that's a little more stylized and more interesting than what it was before. Let's go to the last layer and see what we can do with that. In this case, I want to make it look like it's sort of punched into the gray a little bit, so it's sort of embossed. So in this case, I think the tool I'm going to use is not going to be the fill and stuff that's going on in there. I'm going to go back to that layer style. And keeping in mind, we've used a layer style before. You can use layer style and the fill effects and gradients and stuff. Sometimes there might be a little conflict, but let's just see what we can do with this. So in this case, I've got an emboss. I can make it contoured. I can make it textured. Okay. Oh yeah, I can add contours and textures. I don't think I'm going to do that. In this case, I'm going to choose, let's see, outer bevel looks like this, so it looks like it's sort of floating on top. That's actually kind of cool. I don't mind that. Or you can do an inner bevel where it looks like it's punched in, and you can aff affect things like the depth and where the reflection is. And in this case, you know, maybe I want to make it flip around so it looks like if the light's coming from up top, it's it's affecting this so it looks like it's punched into the metal a little bit. And again, it's up to you which way you want to make this work. You know, that inner bevel looks good, but I didn't mind that out. Wow, that's an interesting effect too. The down makes it look like the metal has sort of been punched in. Or it's floating out to it like that. I don't mind either of those things. So, um, hmm. Depth, you can play around with that a little bit. It's using this universal angle thing, which is kind of nice. I'm going to soften this a little bit. Like that, though. If you change one angle for this level, it's going to change it for everything so that it matches the light sources and keeps things looking believable. So you know what? I'm going to leave this. I think I'm going to leave it something like this. Less soft. Bring it up. Not quite giving me the same effect, but just something a little more stylized. Say OK. So that's how you're doing it. Um, and now finally, of course, you know, there, there was our original, and there's what we took it to. You know, we've really changed it a lot, but the idea is to make something that looks good and believable. Um, I could save it as a JPEG like this. If I saved it as a PNG with a transparency, it would go against just about any background that I want. Any way about it, I'm going to save it. And now that I'm using the extension inside of Chrome, I can just go hit File and Save. And it's going to save it automatically to my Google Drive. That's great. If I wanted to save it with a different name, I could use Save as PSD. And in this case, it's going to open up dialog. Now I have Google File, uh, Google Drive file stream there, so I can find my way back to my folder and save it there too if I wanted. Anyway, about it. So hope that helps. Try it for yourself. See what you can do. There are an infinite number of things we can play around with, but hopefully that'll get you started.